Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody, wherever you are. We are very, very glad to have you, to have you here. As many of you know, I'm Monica Santamarina, WUCOS President General. And we are really, very happy and excited to have you here in the last of our training sessions for facilitators of conversations in the spirit to be held as part of WUCOS School for Synodality. Thank you all for being here. Please use the chat to send us all the messages on, and to talk with anybody from the team. So now uh, let me share with you a brief PowerPoint presentation to introduce what we're gonna do. Okay, and um, WUCO, uh, which is uh, very simple to say, is, in, is really the World Union of Catholic Women's Organization. It is a very big name, well, for a big organization, of course. Um, Wuko was born in, uh, wait again, it's me. Wuko was born in 1910, it was founded, so we have many, many years. And our mission is to promote the presence, participation, and co-responsibility of Catholic women in society and the church in order to enable them to fulfill their mission of human evangelization and to work for human development. Um, now we represent more than 8 million women associated in nearly 100 organizations working in more than 50 countries around the five continents. Here you can see a little bit of the map. So in 2021, with the, uh, the orientation of the Dicastery for Human Development, for Integral Human Development, and the Dicastery of the uh, Light Family and Life, WUCO created its World Human Observatory, its World Women's Observatory, sorry, uh, inspired by its motto, listening to transform lives. As many of you know, uh, the observatory's mission is to give visibility to women, especially the most vulnerable, who seem invisible, to inspire and generate pastoral strategies by the church, synergies by civil society NGOs, public policies by states, and contributions to the international agenda that favor the integral human development of women and that of their families, communities, and people. Mm, so through our World Women Observatory, we developed during 2023, the project Synodality According to Women Correspondent for the Synodal Process, their contributions and challenges. Where 452 women corresponsible for the synodal process at the diocesan, national, or continental level participated in a survey. We heard and saw testimonies of women that perform extraordinary services for the church, hardly ever known or valued. And we listened to the testimony of women and men that were participating at the first phase of the synodal assent. In 2024, we opened WUCO's School for Synodality, Women's Mission in the Synodal Church. The school started with the March 2024 four webinars, experiences and reflections of participants in the assembly with different standard models from the five continents, proposals, and matters for consideration from chapter nine of the synthesis report, Women in the Life and Mission of the Church, and encouraged us to continue participating in the synodal path. 507 women from 61 countries attended these webinars. I think I brought one. Okay. With Pope Francis, we are convinced that synodality is a way of being church. Today, according to the will of God, in a dynamic of discerning and listening together to the voice of the Holy Spirit. So, 
in that spirit, today we have more than 300 women from 57 countries training to be facilitators, sharing the great richness of listening to each other and discerning what the Holy Spirit is inspiring to the whole synodal church. This is, as I told you, the last of the four training sessions of today. So our coordinators are getting really exhausted. Thank you for the patience and the hard work. On 23 April, 2024, we will have two big events of conversations in the spirit on women's participation in a synodal church. We hope to have more than 1,000 women around the world participation. We can fit um, 1,400, so we have a long way to go. Help us spread the word. The registration will close on April 21. We extended the period. It will uh, close on April 21 at the 23 hours Rome time. So we hope to see you all there and to help us invite people and spread out the word. We really hope that all of you that are training to be facilitators will help us spreading the synodal practices and this new way of discernment in your dioceses, parishes, and organizations. As the Lord said, go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. Well, and now I will leave you in the hands of Robert Chouinier, Executive Director of the Ignatian Encounter Ministry and his team. Robert is a founder and Executive Director of Ignatian Encounter Ministry. He's a former professor of theology at Fordham University in New York and chair of the Conference for Pastoral Planning and Council Development. Robert, we are listening to you now. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you, Monica. Uh, and thank you all for being here. It's wonderful to be here with all of you, to see everyone from so many different places all around the world. Um, today, this, uh, this afternoon, this morning, we'll be taking you through our uh, facilitator training for a conversation in the spirit. Uh, and we're so pleased to be working uh, with Wukwu on this project. Uh, before we get started, uh, we'll have a short opening prayer, and then we'll dive right in. Uh, so why don't we begin in a spirit of prayer? Let me just bring up the prayer. Here we are. And uh, you can speak the words that are in bold for all of us. Just keep yourself muted, but we'll speak together. Uh, so let's begin as we do all things in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. Give me an undivided heart to revere your name. Teach me wisdom and knowledge, for in your commandments I trust. Monica? Discernment. Okay, sorry, my micro was off. I couldn't put it on. So discernment is when we need to solve great problems and make crucial decisions. We need it at all times to help us recognize God's timetable. Often discernment is exercised in small. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Often discernment is exercised in small and apparently irrelevant things. Since greatness of spirit is manifested in simple everyday realities, it involves striving on trauma for all that is great, better, and more beautiful, while at the same time being concerned for the little things for each day's responsibilities and commitments. So all wisdom and good. knowledge, for in your commandments, commandments I trust. I trust. It is not a matter of applying rules or repeating what was done in the past. Since the, since the same solutions are not valid in all circumstances and what was useful in one context may not prove to be so in another. The discernment of spirits liberates us from rigidity, which has no place before the perennial today of the recent Lord. From Pope Francis. 
we pray this uh, prayer from the Carmelites together. Um, Teach me wisdom and knowledge, for in your commandments I trust. God, our Father, you have a plan for each one of us. You hold out to us a future full of hope. Give us the wisdom of your spirit so that we can see the shape of your plan in the gifts you have given us and in the circumstances of our daily lives. Give us the freedom of your spirit you with all our heart and to choose your will above all else. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. All right. Well, let's get started then. Uh, this is a 90 minute uh, training, and I'll go through the agenda and show you exactly what we'll be doing in just a second. Uh, let me say just a, a brief word about Ignatian Encounter Ministry. We began during the first consultation of the Synod back in 20. 2021, 2022, to train facilitators in the spiritual conversation method for that first consultation. Uh, after the assembly in Rome in October, we received the letter from the people of God and the synthesis report. And in that, it really had a mandate and a call for all of us throughout the church to experiment and adapt this conversation in the spirit model, the same model they were using in Rome, and to equip the church with suitable and trained people to facilitate that process. And it also encouraged the use of digital options to do that. Uh, with that call, really, Ignatian Encounter Ministry came together to develop this training and these events uh, to help support the, the conversion of the church, the synodal conversion of the church, one conversation at a time. Uh, so you can find out more about us at IgnatianEncounterMinistry.org. All right. So this is our agenda for today. We've already gotten started. We've begun with our welcomes and our introductions. We've already prayed together. We're halfway there. Uh, right after this, I'll begin with an overview of the conversation in the spirit model, where it came from and why we're using it. We'll then talk about the special and important critical role of the facilitator within these conversations, the role that we hope you might play uh, on April 23rd next week. We'll talk about that event agenda on the 23rd, the virtual event and what will happen and where the facilitators will be needed. We'll talk especially about the note-taking application. We take notes at the end of our conversation to capture our ideas and move them forward. It's critical to the synodal process. The conversations are, are important, they're deep and rich, but we need the notes to move them forward so that they can help enrich the church. After that, we'll have a demonstration conversation, what we call a fishbowl, where there'll be a facilitator and four participants having a shortened version of the conversation so that you can watch it and just imagine yourself as the facilitator. After that, as long as we still have time, we'll have small groups for about 10 minutes, just with a few other people to debrief and consider uh, the questions you might have. And then we'll come back and have a large group question and answer period to answer any questions that you might have after that. Uh, we'll say a closing prayer and then hopefully see you on the 23rd uh, to facilitate for our large events. All right, well, let's get started. Uh, this is the large event. It's actually, I'm sorry, this is a mistake. It's Tuesday, April 23rd. I'm sorry about that. Uh, we'll be gathering together 800 participants from around the world in two events. One will be at uh, 1300 or 1 p.m. Rome time. The other will be at 6 p.m. Rome time. You have to make the adjustments based on where you are in the world. Uh, Everyone will be moved into a small group during that conversation with six participants in each room, and each room will have a facilitator uh, for that group. Those, there will be different language groups. So in the small groups, some will be in English, some will be in French, and some will be in Spanish. Uh, obviously, for yourselves, you'll be assigned to an English group if you're able to be there. We need over 100 facilitators to make this conversation event work. Uh, so your participation is really needed, and we hope that you can join us. If you do choose to join us, uh, we ask that you arrive 30 minutes before the conversation uh, so that we can just make sure that all the rooms are prepared and that everyone is comfortable before we begin. So let me talk a little bit about the spiritual conversation model or what we now call conversations in the spirit. A conversation in the spirit really is just like this. It's a group of people that are seated around together. It works very well in a Zoom room as well. It happens to work really well on a beach if you happen to be on a beach like this picture. Um, what's central to the conversation is Jesus Christ. 
Christ is at the center and the focus of the conversation. So it's not just individuals having conversations about themselves. It's really coming around the spirit of the living Christ and having a conversation for what is best uh, for the church in the future. This was the recommended process that came to us from the preparatory documents of the Synod and Synodality in 2021 through the Vatimecum. It was recommended that parishes and dioceses use this process. It's the same process that was used at the General Assembly by the Synod delegates in Rome last October, in October of 23, and I suspect they'll also use it this October in 2024. This process is based on a communal discernment process. Originally, uh, it was used by the first Jesuits and St. Ignatius to have conversation, to make decisions for their future, to see where God might be calling them. But many of our different traditions throughout the church have used processes of communal discernment, of listening deeply to one another to see where God is calling us into the future. Now, what's next here might look a little strange if you're a mathematician. I like to call it theological math. Uh, it makes no sense to a mathematician, but it makes a lot of sense in theology. Basically, it goes like this. One plus one plus one is greater than three. In other words, when you have three people or more together in a conversation, um, there's more than just the three people there. The, we believe that the Holy Spirit is present among us. And we use this conversation in the spirit model to work together collaboratively to understand where the spirit of God is calling us to. Uh, so these are deeply powerful conversations. They're also lateral conversations. Uh, they're based on people's experience and we believe that God is truly present in the heart of each human person walking with them. So we want to ask, what is God doing in your life? What's happening in your own heart? You don't need a degree in theology to talk about that. You don't need to be ordained to have to be part of this conversation. There's no one in this conversation that has any special knowledge over and against anyone else in the conversation. We're all on the same plane. God is in relationship with each one of us stirring in our hearts. Therefore, this conversation is really about active listening with curiosity and humility, wondering what is it that God is doing? What is it that God is calling us to? These conversations are also non-judgmental. We're not passing judgment on this person or that person or their opinions and views. We're really just trying to understand empathetically with compassion where the other person or other people in the conversation, where they're coming from and what their experience is all about. Pope Francis has really encouraged this kind of conversation because he believes that through it, we can have an experience of metanoia, a change of heart, that when we open ourselves to listen deeply to another person, that we're changed through that conversation. So while these conversations will produce a report that will move forward in the synod, and that's very important, the conversation itself is also a moment to be changed and moved by listening deeply to each other. And we leave that conversation different than when we went into that conversation. While we do focus on individual experiences, we also ultimately are working together to have a conversation on the, our future hopes for the church. So the conversation is always focused ultimately not just on us as individuals, but moving towards a conversation on our future dreams. Now, concretely, the conversation happens in three rounds of both listening and speaking. Everyone in the conversation will have an opportunity to speak at least three times, and everyone will be asked to listen deeply to what is said. So the first round, everyone speaks to the questions that were given to them. The questions for the conversation next week have been sent out already to everyone who's participating. Uh, the hope is that they're thinking about those questions, they're praying over it, they're reflecting on them. So when they come to the conversation, they speak of the fruits of their prayer or the fruit of their reflection on these questions. So they're not just answering this question and that question and that question. It's really a synthesis, a reflection on all of the questions and what's moved in them as they've thought about them. After that first round, everyone will have an opportunity to speak during that first round. But after that first round, there's one solid minute of silence. And that really is to allow the Holy Spirit to enter into the conversation and let a lot of these words settle down into our hearts. But we need to create some spaces for the Holy Spirit to get in. 
Uh, and so we'll be together for silence at the end of each round. In the second round, after everyone has spoken once and we've had some silence, everyone has an opportunity to speak back what they, what resounded, what touched them, what moved them while they were listening to each other. This is a point in the conversation that can become quite intimate and personal as people begin to reflect what they heard back to each other. Um, it's a deeply moving part of the conversation. After that, we'll have another minute of silence and let all of that settle in. And then the last question is that theological math. We recognize that the Holy Spirit has been here the whole time in our lives and in this conversation. So in light of that, what is the Holy Spirit calling us to? The Holy Spirit always calls us to action. Uh, it's always a, a movement outward. There's never a time where we ask the, the Holy Spirit or ask the living Christ, what should we do? And the Spirit says, nothing, everything's done, just relax. It's never happened. We're always called outward into mission. So in this conversation, how is the Spirit calling us forward? That's the third round. And then after that, we have some notes. So that's the basics of the spiritual conversation. So why do we use this? Just to review, first of all, because we, we have trust. We have trust that God is alive in our hearts and in our lives and in every other person and in their lives as well in that conversation. That's the basic foundation of our belief in this conversation. Secondly, we develop communion through this conversation. We come together in a collaborative effort, working together to understand what is the Holy Spirit calling us to. So we're not here to put our opinion forward, to push other people's down. We're not here to be the winner of the conversation and other people be the losers. We're really working together, uh, which is a different kind of conversation than is happening in a lot of places. We also seek reconciliation through, through these conversations. We speak from our experiences and find our commonality in those experiences. We're not speaking just about our ideas we're going beyond personal opinions. We're connecting on a deeper level of how God is working in our lives and the lives of those we love and care about. There's fairness in the conversation, as we said. Everyone is working on the same conditions. Everyone will have a certain amount of time to speak. In the first round, you have three minutes. Second round, you have two minutes. Everyone has the same amount of time. Uh, we'll talk about your important role in making sure that it's a fair and equitable conversation. Next, this the conversation in the spirit is inclusive. Everyone's voice is welcomed and everyone's voice is important. It's not that one person has a louder or stronger voice than everyone else. Everyone is heard in the conversation. Now let's talk about facilitators. Facilitators really are at the heart of this conversation process and the heart of the synodal conversion of the church. Facilitators, and we hope that you'll become one, help to model the conversation. Uh, you help to demonstrate what the conversation is like. You know, I've realized after doing this for a while that I can talk till I'm blue in the face. I can talk all day long uh, about a spiritual conversation, but you really only understand it when you experience a spiritual conversation. When you enter into that conversation, you say, ah, okay, now I get it. Uh, so you, as the facilitator, are modeling that for others because we hope that they want to become facilitators and bring it back to their communities as well. So it's almost a process of evangelization where we're trying to evangelize and make new facilitators, but it begins really with you. The role of the facilitator is also to create a safe and welcoming space of encounter where people can meet one another and have an experience of the living God in their presence. Uh, and so a lot of what we do is welcome people in and make them feel safe and comfortable in the conversation. Part of that safety also comes from knowing what's going to come next. Everyone knows that it's these three rounds. And even if you really disagree with the person that's talking, it's only three minutes. It's going to be over soon. So we create a safe and welcoming space for everyone in the conversation. We ensure equity in the process. So as I said earlier, everyone has a certain amount of time to speak. And the facilitator is also the timekeeper that helps to make sure everyone keeps to their time. Because if one person speaks for a very long time, that means that other people have a very short time to speak. So we want to make sure that there's equity for everyone. Uh, Sister Nathalie Bacquad taught me this, that the conversations move from I to we. 
And in this, it's a collaborative work exercise where we work together. This is not to say that the I is bad and the we is good, but we begin with our individual experiences. Everyone comes in talking about my experience. But as you work through the conversation, the conversation brings us to a sense of we. By the end of the conversation, we're now working together to create the report. Uh, we've now listened to each other and we've created a small community where only an hour ago we were perfect strangers. So the conversation, that movement from I to we is a critical and important movement. And you as the facilitator uh, help to push that forward, help to make sure that that is moving towards the we of the conversation. Next, uh, facilitators help to hold the tensions in the conversation. Sometimes people don't agree. They have different points of view. We don't wanna dismiss that and we don't need to come to an easy solution but we have to learn how to hold tensions within a conversation so that we can hold different points of view and still like each other, still look at each other as human people um, with respect. How do you hold tension? If you imagine yourself as a facilitator, how do you respond when there's a moment of tension in a conversation? Do you try to make peace at all costs as quickly as possible? Or can you hold the tension in the conversation and allow other people to do so? That's an important role for the facilitator. Lastly, you hold space for the Holy Spirit. That happens through uh, the silence that you hold between the rounds. And it also helps to recognize throughout the conversation that the Spirit is present. Um, even when you think about the environment behind you, you might have a candle, you might have something that helps to create a sacred space where you are. So let me talk more particularly about a few aspects of the role of the facilitator then. Your role in the conversation is to accompany a group of five to seven people. We hope it's about six. Um, five uh, to seven is the, the, the perfect number. Uh, to accompany that group in a 60-minute, one-hour conversation in the spirit. Uh, that will happen within a small group within our events next week. You create a welcoming and prayerful experience. We talked about that already. And you establish the order of the speakers. You'll notice that our uh, when we get into the demonstration conversation, you'll see this happen. Uh, we establish that order alphabetically by first name. It becomes the first collaborative exercise of the group just to organize themselves. And the facilitator helps to make that happen. Now, if you're getting concerned at this point, don't worry. There is a script to follow. Uh, it takes you right along from welcome to the conversation, through the introduction, through the three rounds of sharing, and right into the notes. Uh, we encourage you to make the conversation your own, but we also give you a path to follow with the script, and we encourage you to use that so that everyone in the event is having a similar experience. There are ground rules. At the beginning of our conversation next week, we will share those ground rules and ask everyone to affirm them or to say that they will follow the ground rules. Let me show you what those ground rules are right now. First ground rule, everyone in the conversation is expected to participate. Everyone is a participant. There are no people that say, yeah, you know, today I don't feel like talking, I'm just going to listen. That's, that's really against the ground rules. Everyone, if you show up, you're expected to participate within the conversation. As the facilitator, you participate by being the facilitator. There are times when the facilitator can participate, but in our conversation, we have only have a short amount of time to speak. There will be an opportunity for facilitators to share their input uh, for the synod. But as the facilitator in this conversation, we ask that you don't participate within the rounds of speaking, and you'll have an opportunity to do that later. Second ground rule. Only one person speaks at a time. This is one of the critical ground rules of conversation in the spirit. Everyone is asked to listen uh, with an open heart to what everyone else is speaking, but only one person speaks at a time. Next, there is no crosstalk or interruption. If one person is talking, no one is to interrupt them. They have their three minutes and they can say whatever they want for three minutes uh, uninterrupted. If people interrupt though, you have to think, how are you going to handle that? So think about that. But uh, a crosstalk is really not allowed. Next, time limits are respected. Uh, there will be certain time limits everyone is given, and you as the facilitator are asked to stop them 
uh, after they reach their time. They know that, they agreed to the ground rule. The facilitator provides a 30 second warning. You know what, this is a little trick that I do during these conversations. I usually have like a red card and at 30 seconds, so I don't have to interrupt people with my voice, I'll just do something like this. Because you can see that on my screen over there. Uh, okay, something's happening. That means it's 30 seconds. Um, so you can have some 30 second warning that's not, you can't hear. Uh, but then you also want to let people know when they reach their time. Uh, when they finish their time, they can finish their thoughts, their sentence, um, what they were saying, but you really need to stop them at that point. And by the way, no participant is required to use all of their time. If they have three minutes, they might just use one. That's fine. We'll just move on to the next person. Finally, all of the conversations are confidential. We ask people to keep those conversations private. They're not recorded. Uh, we only keep notes at the very end. The last, this last point I think is important too for you to know and for everyone else. You are responsible for your sharing. In other words, you're responsible for the level and depth of what you share. So if one person in the conversation shares very deeply, very personally about something um, that's very close to them, that doesn't mean that you need to do that same level of sharing. You speak to whatever you're comfortable with. And just because one person spoke that deeply doesn't mean that you do. It doesn't force you to go deeper. People become very vulnerable and uncomfortable if they go farther than they're prepared to go. Um, so we don't want to push anyone to go further than they're ready to go in that conversation. Those are our ground rules, and we will share them with everyone in the conversation. Next, uh, facilitators are also the timekeepers. Uh, you might want to use a separate timepiece. I use my phone and use the, the time uh, stopwatch on the phone. You might also use a different small time clock to keep it on the side uh, to let people know when, they, when their time is up. You observe the silence, the moments of silence, the one minutes of silence between the rounds, and you, you take notes at the end of the conversation. Again, it's not notes throughout the conversation. We're only capturing, capturing the notes at the end, and you will see how that works. Let me talk uh, about a few considerations for facilitators. First of all, everyone is sharing from their own personal experience. The questions that everyone receives starts with, asking about their experience. Recall a time, think of a moment when. Um, everyone is an expert in their own experience. Therefore, there's no real judgment here. Everyone's just sharing their experience and listening deeply to each other. The second thing is that everyone is listening deeply in a new way sometimes to the stories that touch them and touch their hearts. We're not expected to solve any problems or to defend ourselves in any way. We're simply listening to other people. You again create a sacred space that people can enter with reverence. We have an examine or a preparatory reflection and meditation before the conversation. It will happen together in the large group uh, just before we move into your the small group conversation. So people will be prepared and in a prayerful space already. Uh, you also create, as we said, a safe place where people can um, are held with respect and not judged or criticized. I think it's important to note that at any time within a Zoom meeting, people can use that big red button at the bottom right and leave the conversation if they're uncomfortable. You as a facilitator should be prepared for that. What happens if someone suddenly leaves? Now, maybe it's not because they became upset by anything. Maybe they had a bad internet connection, who knows? But you also need to think if you're a facilitator and someone drops out, how are you going to help keep that conversation moving? Because they're probably not coming back. So finally, the conversations are not a place for debate, for defending, for arguing with each other. You can have those conversations somewhere else. Uh, they're not also conversations to correct one another. Even if you're a catechist and you feel that what the person is saying is against the catechism of the church, this is not the time. This is the time to try to understand where they're coming from. And then we'll, we'll talk about how to do better catechesis later. But now it's really trying to understand how people think about their lives and think about their faith. Um, so just letting people speak is very, very important. Finally, you are not counselors. You're not asked to do that. You're not necessarily trained for that as a facilitator. So you're not expected to take care of people in a counseling way um, if they do become upset. 
There are people that are available uh, in the main room if they want to speak with anyone. The WUKU staff will be there afterwards. If someone truly wants to continue to speak and needs some assistance, there's someone that will be there to talk with them. But don't feel that you need to do that in the conversation. Here's a few tips. Um, one of the documents that you received, one was the script, which is very important. That includes the questions for the conversation. But the second document is the facilitator tips. I would encourage you to read over that document because it has a lot of ideas on how you might respond to certain situations. We find that there are very typical situations that you will encounter that you will have to address as a facilitator. Here are sort of the top um, situations you will have to address. The first one is people exceeding their time limit, when people keep on talking. And when they're talking from the heart, they can speak passionately, and they're just going to keep on going. Uh, so it's, it's difficult to stop people when they are so impassioned, um, but we need to leave time for everyone else. So how are you going to address that as a facilitator in a way that's gentle but firm? Uh, it can happen in many ways, but think in your mind what you would say. The second thing that happens is people interrupt other people. Um, this usually happens in a positive way. They're saying, oh, I know how you feel, or that happened to me, or they're trying to relate to each other. That's well and good, but it's really against our ground rules. So when people are interrupting, to be as clear as possible that there is no crosstalk, it's one of the ground rules, um, everyone is allowed to speak. You'll have to make a judgment call on when that's necessary. The next one is something that you, you can't really do much about, but you need to be aware that it happens quite a bit. Everyone's asked to speak on their experience, but at the beginning, people might not speak from their experience or have what we call non-experiential inputs, where they speak about ideas or their opinion or the latest theology book that they read or what they saw in the newspaper, anything except their own personal experience. Um, this is not what the conversation was really aimed towards, at least at the beginning. So you may not be able to stop this, but you might be able to redirect it after someone speaks to encourage everyone to, to speak from their experience. Others might, as I said earlier, have this uh, need for pastoral correction, especially leaders within the church who feel it important to correct someone if they are, feel that they are wrong. Again, this is not a time to do this, but if it happens, how are you going to respond to that? People will have strong emotions at times. These are deeply personal stories that people are talking about and, and issues that are deeply important to them. So people may express strong emotions and may become upset. Again, how will you handle that in a way that's compassionate and gentle uh, while at the same time uh, keeping the conversation moving because others also need to speak? If people continue to disregard the ground rules, if they keep interrupting, if they disregard the idea of time limits, you do have an option to call for help uh, from someone in the main room. And myself or one of the WUKU staff will come in and assist you. It happens very rarely. In fact, it, I haven't really experienced it much, but it does happen. Um, so if it does, I want to let you know that there's someone there that can come to your assistance. So there are three ways that you can facilitate. Now that you've taken all of this in and you're thinking to yourself, oh, how am I going to do all of this? Is it possible? Let me give you three options. The first option is, and this is the best one, uh, that you are the facilitator, keeping the conversation moving, that you are also the timekeeper, and you're also taking the notes on your own computer while looking at the Zoom screen on half of your computer and your notes on the other half. That is the ideal situation. Um, but that might not, not everyone is comfortable with that. So if you're not comfortable doing all three, you might ask a friend to help you. When I say a friend, I mean someone who's physically with you in the room next to you in the conversation. And you can help, you can split those roles. So while you facilitate, they might keep the time and they also might keep the notes. Um, so that's an option to have someone else help you and I would recommend this option if you don't do it by yourself. The third option, which is very limited because we don't know how many facilitators we will have and how many people actually show up on the day. We won't know until that day. 
So there is a possibility that you could request a virtual partner, a second person that we could assign and bring into your room with you, and they could do the timekeeping and notes, and you could do the facilitation. But we, again, we don't know how the numbers are going to play out. So even if you request a virtual partner, if we're really stretched thin, you might have to go it alone. So just be prepared for that. Uh, but those are the three ways. A special note to those who are using your phone for the conversation to log in. Um, it's fine to use your phone. You can definitely do that. Uh, but when you do that, you should use the Zoom mobile app. So download the Zoom app uh, from the app store and use that app for the conversation. In other words, you can't dial in. You can't use the phone number and dial in. Number one, they may charge you exorbitant rates. Uh, your phone company might charge you a lot of money for that phone call, and you don't want that. Um, but there's some functions that you just won't be able to see people. It just does not work well as a facilitator. So use the Zoom mobile app on your phone. If you are using your phone, it's difficult to look at the Zoom meeting and keep the time on the same phone. So be, be have a separate timepiece if you're using your phone, either a watch or a clock or something. Um, if you are using your phone, we strongly recommend that you have a friend with you to keep the notes. Again, it's very difficult to keep notes on your phone if you're also on a Zoom call and you're keeping time on one same device. It's almost impossible. Uh, so I would encourage you to have a friend there, someone you know who can help keep your time or your notes. And then lastly, uh, if you are using a phone, keep your notes on a separate device on a different computer or simply use paper and you can submit that later. I'll talk to you how to uh, I'll explain how to do that in a moment. But you'll be able to type in those notes after the meeting uh, and send them to us. OK, let me talk about the note taking application. So now we get towards the end of our conversation after the third round. After we ask, how is the Holy Spirit moving us? Uh, we begin to create a report. At that point, you'll bring up the note-taking function, and we'll show you a video in just a second on what that looks like uh, and how you access it. Uh, through our note-taking function, we ask three questions. We ask for moments of convergence. Now, convergence, yes, there are ideas that we all agreed on. But even more deeply, a convergence are ideas that emerge in the conversation and they keep coming up. And as we everyone speaks, everyone seems to be talking about this same theme. And it might not be a theme that we any of us thought about at the beginning. It emerged for us and we converged around this idea. Um, that's a true convergence and it's very important to a communal discernment. We want to take note of that. That's the Holy Spirit trying to say something. So that's first. Second are divergences. This is the, uh, the idea that we have different points of view, but we didn't come to an agreement. People expressed a different point of view. We let, it, we let them have those different points of view and we take notes of both points of view. So were there points where we diverged? We have different points of view. We wanna name both of those. Finally, and this goes to the idea that the Holy Spirit is with us, what were the recommendations? What are the actions uh, that we want to recommend uh, for the church moving forward. And this is really what is the Holy Spirit calling us to at the end. Everyone in that conversation, yourself included, are working together to name those things. At the end, if you're using the note-taking app, you should share your screen. You have that ability on a Zoom meeting to share your screen. So share that screen and they'll see the notes that you've been writing and just say, all right, is this the idea? Is, does everybody agree with what I've written here? Do you want to change anything? It's a moment of transparency where everyone can see what you're writing on their behalf and submitting in their name. Uh, so you want to have some moment where everyone can see the notes that you've, that you've taken. All right, let me, uh, uh, Matthew here, our, our technical support, uh, has a video that explains the details of this note function. So Matthew? Hello and welcome. In this short video, I'm going to teach you how to use the note-taking software. At the top, you see the Show Resource button. You click on this, and then you can see the resources here that you can click on and open in new tabs. And then on these, you can see the questions for the various rounds, including that final round where you're going to be doing the note-taking. 
for any of these links, you can click on them, open a new tab. Here you copy these, and this copies it to your clipboard. Once it's in your clipboard, you can click on Zoom Chat and paste it inside of the Zoom Chat to your small group to share it with other members of your small group. They'll let them be able to see and reflect on the question. You don't have to do that part, but it's helpful and some people like to do so. Down here, we see our conversation takeaways. So this is what we're going to be doing during the reporting and note-taking round, the final round. We simply type our comments and we select convergence, divergence, or recommendation. I'll select recommendation and then we click on save. It'll say saved below. And if we scroll down all the way past all of my other fake notes, <laughs> we can see comment right there. If we would like to see the last note we took at the top, we can go from old to new to new to old. We can now see it at the top. We can also edit our notes by clicking the edit button and clicking save. When it is time to share the notes with the group to get their feedback to make sure that all the notes look okay to them, you can either share your screen on Zoom if you like, or alternatively, you can click copy all notes to keep clipboard. When you've done that, you can open Zoom chat. I'm just going to pretend this notepad here is Zoom chat, and you can paste in there. And you can see that that copied it to my clipboard and listed out everything from our notes. Last but not least, there's a timer here that is completely optional to use. You can click on new, maybe set this to three minutes for a round, set timer, and click on start. The timer will start counting down, and when it hits zero, it'll start counting backwards negatively. So you'll see a negative number there. And then we can click reset to three, and then start again. Alternatively, we can click new to set a new timer, set timer. Now remember, this entire interface here that you're seeing for all of these notes is entirely private to you. No other facilitator or attendee will be seeing this unless you choose to share your screen with them, or if you copy these things and paste them in the Zoom chat or copying all the notes to the clipboard. So you are supposed to share the notes um, with your group members so they can you know, review them, as we just said, either by screen sharing or copying this and pasting it into the Zoom chat with your breakout group. Um, but other than that, you don't have to share anything else. After the event, of course, all of these will be shared with the host, but just wanted to make sure you knew as a reminder that none of this will be shown to the attendees live unless you are showing them to them. We're here to help and we look forward to having a wonderful event and God bless. Hello and welcome. In this short video, I'm Okay, thank you, Matthew. Uh, yes, I was looking at the comments. Um, we will provide this video to you. Uh, a couple of things, you are able to slow down the speed of, of Matthew's speaking. Uh, so you can slow it down a little bit and you can put on the captions so that you can see the words written, uh, if that helps as well. And we'll send that video to everyone. Uh, we'll actually put a link in the chat. Um, and yeah, Matthew just did it for you. Uh, so hopefully you can watch that again and again, and we'll have an opportunity in a moment to see it in action in our fishbowl conversation. And we'll also have questions about it too. Let me talk about three different ways that you can submit your notes though. These are a couple options for you. The first option, and it's the big green check mark, is uh, the best option that's possible. And this, uh, in this option, you use the note-taking application. It's up on your screen uh, at, and you're taking notes on the same computer. On one half of your computer are the notes. On the other half of your computer is the Zoom meeting. You're typing those notes in, you finish, you share the screen so everyone sees your notes. And then as soon as you hit send, it immediately goes back to the WUKU staff and they will submit it into the report. That's the, that's the best thing to do. If you're not comfortable with that, if it doesn't work, if it's frustrating, um, there's a second op two other options. Second option, have a friend use that note-taking application on their computer. So you're on one computer or your phone with the Zoom meeting, and your friend is next to you with their device, and they are typing in the notes for you. Um, if that happens, you'll need to read out the report to the group because the, you can't share your friend's computer. You can't share the screen. Um, so you'll have to read that out, but it's perfectly acceptable. The third option is you or your friend 
can take notes on paper. If you say, I can't do this technology stuff, it's not working for me. Okay, just take notes on paper. And afterwards, you can type those notes into the application. If you can pull it up afterwards, it's less stressful. Uh, and you have 24 hours after our meeting to type it into the application. Or if the app, you can't even open the application, if that's not working, you can type your notes and email it to this address, info at ignationencounterministry.org. And again, you'll have 24 hours to submit your notes after the meeting. So those are three ways that you can submit your notes. And again, we'll have a long question and answer period at the end for this. Let me talk about the agenda for the event on the 23rd so you understand what will happen and how the small group conversation, where that comes, where that happens. So we'll do just like today. We'll welcome everyone into the room. We'll introduce the conversation and event and the conversation and the spirit a little bit. And then we'll read the ground rules. And everyone will be asked to affirm them with a thumbs up or by saying yes, uh, that they agree to live by the ground rules. Then we will read out the primary questions, all of the questions that they received. This is not the first time that they've heard the questions. They've had them for a week or more. Uh, so we hope that they have talked about it or thought about it before they arrive. But we will read them uh, in a formal way. We will then have our examine, uh, which will be a prayer experience where it helps people think about the question, think about their experience, and pray together. Immediately after that shared exam and prayer in the large group, we then move into the small groups by language. So again, English, Spanish, French groups. Uh, and you as the facilitator would be assigned to one room and six people will soon join you in that room. And then you use the script to go through the conversation. After that 60 minutes, that one hour, you've taken the notes, you've had the conversation, everyone comes back for this very special moment that we call naming the graces. We believe that these conversations are full of grace. The Holy Spirit has been present among us. Uh, so we want to name the grace that has emerged through this conversation. What, have, what has been um, realized for you? People will use the chat uh, to name those graces. We'll then have someone from WUKWU come in and simply explain what will happen next, what will happen with the report and how it will be sent uh, to the Vatican and to the Synod office so that the notes are moving somewhere. We will then have a moment of thanks and a closing prayer and we should be finished in about uh, an hour and a half. All right, now we come to uh, my favorite part, the fishbowl conversation. Uh, this will be an opportunity for you to watch a conversation in action. It's going to be a shortened conversation. It will only be 20 minutes instead of the regular 60 minutes. We just want to show you the dynamics of the conversation. So the way that we shorten it, we only have four participants, maybe three or four today, um, as opposed to our normal six. And instead of having the normal three minutes for the first round, two minutes for the second round, one minute for the third round, every round will only be one minute. So each participant will only have one minute to speak today, just because it's a demonstration. What I'd ask you to do during this time is to imagine yourself as the facilitator. Our facilitator today is Anne-Marie Brennan. So imagine yourself as Anne-Marie as she goes through the, the, the conversation. How would you respond and react? Afterwards, uh, assuming we have time, we'll go into small groups with six people that you can just talk about everything I've said, any questions that you've had, and your uh, ideas around this conversation you're about to watch. Uh, we'll have just a maybe seven to eight minutes for that. And then we'll come back and have a large group question and answer where we'll be here to answer any questions that you might have. I would encourage you to take notes during this time. Uh, when you watch the conversation, just take a few notes on what you think you would do if you were the facilitator, for instance. Again, on April 23rd, uh, we will read the ground one question. So you don't need to read the questions again in your small group. We already heard them in the large group. We will have the examine prayer together. So you don't need to do the examine prayer. We've already prayed. Uh, we'll just move right into small groups after the examine and we'll get to the conversation, which is where we're gonna go right now. So I'd like to welcome Anne-Marie and our participants. Hi, Anne-Marie. <laughs> oh, hello, everybody. 
And our participants and I will take a back seat for now and leave it in Emory's capable facilitator hands. Okay, welcome. Uh, yes, yeah, so thank you for joining us. Um, just to point out, I, I do have my scripts here, which I will use. Um, and I do use my phone as a timer, and I'll be using this for the 30 second uh, reminder. So we have with us today, um, Helene, is that correct? Is that how you pronounce your name? So if you could unmute because you- Yes. Were... Yes, okay, great. And Adela yes. and uh, Christoria? Christoria. Christoria, thank you. Christoria. So uh, may, um, as we begin, um, okay, we will, um, this session um, normally would be 60 minutes, but for the purposes of this facilitation, it's just going to be 20 minutes. And each of you will have an opportunity to share your reflections on the uh, four questions uh, related to, um, to how the church has encouraged and embraced your gifts and charism as a woman in the ecclesial community and so forth. So in the first round, um, you will have three minutes. That's what you would read uh, on the 23rd, but for the purposes of this conversation, uh, it will just be one minute. Um, and you will respond freely without interruption. And once everybody has spoken, we will have um, a minute of silence and you'll get to feel what that minute of silence is like. We'll then have a second round, and this will be an opportunity to name anything that resonated with you in the first round as you listened. And you will have um, two minutes in, on the 23rd, uh, but for the purposes of this demonstration, it will just be one minute. So this group will just have one minute to express what they experienced and what resonated and emotions they felt as they listened in the first round. Um, then we will have another minute of silence. And in that final round, um, there'll be an opportunity to name what you feel the Holy Spirit might be saying to us through this conversation. And then we'll conclude... Um, by working together to reflect on the conversation, those convergences, divergences, or recommendations. So, uh, so let's let's begin here with um, again the introductions. Um, we have um, Adela, who will um, maybe we'll go in alphabetical order for um, this conversation. Um, if you'd like to just say your name, Adela, and then um, Christori Christoria and Helene. Okay, hello, I'm Adela Gonzalez, I am a Spanish, and uh, I, I work for the World Women Observatory of the of Gucco in Rome. Thank you, Adela. And Christoria? Hi, my name is Christoria. Um, I'm Canadian, I live in the US, I'm a psychologist and a catechist. Thank you, Christoria. And Helena? Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Sorry, we have uh, uh, always problems with the Wi-Fi, so sometimes I can't hear you. I am Helen. I am Egyptian. I live in Cairo. I serve in the Greek Catholic Byzantine Church. And I am a pharmacist and a science teacher, but I retired now. Great, thank you so much, welcome. You have quite an international group here with the different continents represented, great. So we'll begin now with our first round of conversation. Again, you'll have um, for this round one minute to respond and I'll indicate uh, when you have 30 seconds left. And you're also welcome to take notes um, so that as things strike you, you can note that um, to be able to reflect back in the second round. So um, we'll uh, take 20 seconds of silence now so you can collect your thoughts on those questions.
Okay, so let's begin with Adela. Okay, thank you. So, since my youth in my Paris and now in Wuku, I have been able to put my gifts at the service of the church. However, as a woman, as I see resistance to accessing to responsibilities in the church. So what are my feelings? My difficulties give me more strength to dedicate, to dedicate my life to ensuring that the church welcomes the gifts and charisma of all women. And about the ministries, without a doubt, it is essential that the church approves the diaconate of women all 16 ministries can be developed by women. And uh, well, I think that, well, I feel that a very necessary new ministry would be that of facilitators of conversation in the spirit, a very important role in the synodal church. And we, women, are specialists in gathering people around the table and listening with Thank our you. hearts beyond the words. Thank you so much, Adela. <laughs> you. Uh, Christoria? Hi, I'd like to say that uh, to answer this question, there have been several phases in my life as a Catholic catechist and psychologist where I felt both that my charisms and gifts had been accepted and uh, used to the full, and also some experiences where I've had where they've been rejected and um, not accepted, and I've had to work very hard and uh, with great perseverance to be heard. And um, the fact that I'm still here talking to you means I didn't give up and I don't give up. Um, one very wonderful experience I had is working at my parish for about 20 years with migrant workers, where I always felt the support and the, the love of our pastor. And I think that that really has um, taught me the importance of a priest that has an open heart, that has a synodal um, attitude towards working in a parish and bringing in the gifts of not just myself, but everybody men and women, and um, how much depends on the attitude of the person who has the authority and, and sharing that authority. And um, I have more to say, but I'll say it later. Thank you very much, Christoria. Helen? Yes, I've been serving in the Greek Catholic Melkite Church, and it's an Eastern Church, so it is not easy for the woman to have a part, but we were lucky. We were lucky because we had a priest uh, that encourages the woman to take part in everything. For the last 28 years, he encouraged us to make a, like a women's community. And he encourages education. He encourages service. He encourages uh, us to attend the, the religious institute so it he, he is positive actually we are lucky to have this wonderful thank you Helene. so um now that everyone has spoken in this first round let's take one minute of silence now and consider all that has been shared what resonated with you most? What was particularly powerful? What struck you? What inspired you?
Okay, so now we'll begin our second round of sharing. And this time anyone can start and we'll um, and then we'll follow the order alphabetically. So um, you'll have um, on the 23rd, each person would have second, two minutes rather in the uh, second round, but uh, for the purposes of this demonstration, you'll have just the one minute. And I'll let you know when you have 30 seconds left. Yeah, so any one of you can start and then we'll just go continue the alphabetical order. Um, just clarifying, are, are we still doing the, are we doing the second question in the first round or are we going straight to the second round? We're going straight to the second round. So the first round was the fruits of your prayer. And now the second round was uh, reflecting on what you heard, what resonated with you, what struck you in the first round. So oh, may I start? <laughs> sure, go ahead. So, well, um, we women work hard to be heard in Egypt, in Canada, in Europe, in Africa, everywhere. So Ellen said, it's not easy, that's true. So we women are resilient and the difficulties give us more strength because we believe we have faith and we believe in Jesus and we want to build the church he wants. We are great creative and together we are strong. Beautiful, thank you. <laughs> I was struck with what Ellen said about the good fortune, the luck that they had that they have a priest who is open to having women in ministry and to one who wants to have women and encourages them and educates them and all of those things. And um, I found the same thing, as I said, I've had both experiences in my, in my life um, working with the church for the past 50 years. And um, I find it troubling. I find it troubling that so much is left to luck and good fortune that if we're lucky enough to work at a parish or to have a priest at our parish who is that person, who is open to the Holy Spirit, who wants the newness, who wants the input, um, then he will receive women. He will receive the gifts and the charisms of women. And if we don't have that, if we have the authoritarian, the clericalist priest who refuses and rejects all of that, I've also been on the receiving end of that myself, both physically and spiritually, um, then that comes to an end, that stops. And I think um, that's the structure is we need to really work hard. And I think that that stifles the spirit. It puts an end to so many things and sure. there is so much work to be done. Yeah, thank you, Christoria. I was struck by the support. There's a lot we can do. The more we get support, the more we shall give. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's, um, we'll move now to the, uh, the third round. But before we do the sharing in the third round, uh, we'll have again one minute of silence. And and as you're thinking it during this minute of silence, you're thinking about um, what? How do you feel the, um, that collective we? How is the spirit prompting us and the church to grow, act, and respond? So based on what you heard, how is the spirit prompting us and the church to grow? act and respond. So we'll have that silence now.
So um, now we'll go uh, the third round. How is the spirit prompting us and the church to grow, act, and respond? So any one of you can uh, start. I'm meditating who was present at the foot of the cross, Our Lady and the women. They were there at the foot of the, at the altar of the cross. And even if the church has to some degree excluded us, we were there, we're still there. The church functions because of women. Your parish priest is run by women. We know this. Um, I don't say this as in a way to insult or put down in any way men or priests, but we know that our parish priests could not function without the work and the love and the prayer of the women that run it. And um, I have the good fortune to travel to many countries, and I, I see that we are upholding the church just as we have from the very beginning. I'm looking right now at an icon where Our Lady is standing at the base of the church and at the base of the cross and holding up, raising her hands up to Jesus. We have always been at the foot of the cross. And I think we are called to remain there, not to, and not in a way to not serve, but to be there, to stay close to Jesus in prayer, um, to continue to, to, perpetuate and to continue our service to the Lord and to never give up and to to give him what we have always given, which is our love and to um, never allow the rejection that we sometimes feel to stop us from giving our all, giving our heart to the Lord and to his people. Amen. Thank you. So a chart of open arms, a chart of brothers and sisters walking together, a prophetic chart without fear, especially without fear to women, that understand that uh, the power is service. This chart with this in a way, but it's a, it's a starting now. So I feel very happy to be part of this process, of this prophetic meeting that we are having today, because something new is beginning in the church. Why? Because the Holy Spirit wants to inspire us. Thank you, Adela. I think it's the encouragement. We need to encourage any good effort from anybody and unity. Unity and encouragement will make us do a lot. Thank you, Helen. Well, really, thank you for that beautiful sharing. And, and it was hard because there are short minutes. But now we're going to move to the note taking just so you can see how this works. So think about what were convergences, what seemed to well up amongst all of us converging among us, as Bob had described before. So I'm going to um, share my screen here. So this is the note taking app. And you can see um, the first page there, um, I selected the ang uh, language English. For this, this is the um, training event, but you also are able to put um, on the 23rd, which of the events that you will be doing. And then, um, so the training event is now. And my name. So I'm now gonna start taking notes as Anne-Marie Brennan, okay. So as you think about um, convergences, um, I'll, I'll just type it in here and then we'll uh, submit it. So what convergences did you hear 
um, especially in the third round. I heard encouragement. I heard unity. Okay. Perseverance. And I think it's A N C E. Say that again. A N C E. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. No, I'm trying to scroll That's down. Nice to meet you. <laughs> oh. uh, okay. And then I think if I just click enter. Uh, Okay, Matthew, I'm trying to click enter. It's not allowing me to move further down or to save. You have to just scroll oh, down and is. click save there. Yep. Yeah, there we go. Okay, good. Okay, so then I'll click save and I can save that comment. So we don't have to do all the convergences now. Um, okay, so were there any other convergences that you heard? Yes, we need the collaboration also of priests. Mm -hmm. Priest. Okay. So we need the collab collaboration of um, priests. Okay. Does, it, does everybody agree on that? Uh, that was kind of a convergence. Okay. So I'll save that one. Any other um, convergences? Okay. Um, or um, divergences or recommendations. So you can just tell me what comes um, to your mind now. I think we don't have any divergence. We agree. I, I didn't hear any. <laughs> okay, so um, recommendations. I heard Adela um, in her recommendation of the, the female diaconate, and um, I I agree, although we didn't really discuss it because we didn't have time. And I don't know if that goes here or in the next one where we're going to talk about structure, or I don't know if we're going to do the next one. So maybe we could put that here. Yeah, this would know. be the place to put a recommendation. Okay. Mm -hmm. So how would you like to phrase that, Pistoria? Um, um, I don't know if Ellen agrees, so we I can't really say that we agreed on it. So I don't know because we didn't discuss it. But the the female diaconate, I, I I believe is a would be an important step to to bringing more service to the church and to increasing the the, the women's role in the church. That's just one thing. I have, I'm full of ideas. Yeah, <laughs> just no time. Um, okay. Yes, I agree with the female diaconate, but for us as a Byzantine church it will be a bit difficult, but I agree. So, um, okay, and Adela, would you agree also? Of course. <laughs> okay, um, Chris, can you happen. repeat how to phrase that? Um, the, the female, female diaconate, diaconate would uh, help, I, I missed the last part of your sentence. Would help to, um, to increase our ability to serve in the church. I don't know. To me, it's all about service. So that's one more way we could serve. But I'm sure there's a, a better way to put it that would be shorter. Well, I, it doesn't have to be shorter if, if, if both um, Adela and uh, Helen agree. Please add, <laughs> add, improve, whatever you think. Me too. You're okay? No, I really approve, yes. Okay. <laughs> I approve. It's okay. Okay, great. 
Okay, so uh, we we have come to the end then here. So, um, but th that's how you would use the note taking app. Um, and so I then I think I am supposed to submit uh, this. Actually, all auto saved when you once you click save, you're hundred percent saved, so you don't. It's have to automatically save. saved. Thank yeah, you. So great, you, great. you can scroll down to see the how the news came in. Uh, okay. Just it keeps scrolling down. Yeah. Okay. I'm trying to do that now. It's um. Hmm. Yeah. It's not allowing me to do that for. Oh, here it goes now. Okay. So I have to go to the end. Okay. So you can see the notes here. That um will are going to be submitted, um as part of this conversation. So we have the two convergences and the one recommendation. So good. Okay, nice. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I I have a question. Where yeah. where on, on our screen? Because I didn't see. Um, if we're acting as facilitators, where does where does the note taking come up? Is it going to be somewhere okay. on our screen, or is so it separate? If you look, or what is it? Okay, so if you look on the chat, um, there is a link to the um the note taking app so um we're we're there's two ways of doing that you can wait to get the link in the chat or we will get it in advance i so i did get it in advance this morning okay. and i had it up on my screen so that it was ready to share and uh when you know we, we started working together so oh, that okay. for me is the easiest yeah. way i i click on it before the meeting starts i have it in a tab, and then um, I have it ready to go, and I just share. I'll have the capacity to share my screen, and then I'll um, so that you can all see the note taking part as we work through it. Okay, yeah, um, I just didn't see it, and I'm not at all an easy study when it comes to this anything technological to start with. It's so small I can barely read it, but also there's just <laughs> it's, um, it's all a mystery right. to me. Let's just put it yeah, that way. Yeah, so if so, you yeah, scroll okay, we're good. up. Um, you, you can see Matthew's note in the chat. Um, it's a two-part chat. There's a Google Drive with some of the slides from today. And then there's, um, it says you can take notes at this link. This takes you to the page shown in the video. It's the same link for both training and practice. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Does that have the link to the um, the notes, Matthew? Maybe, Matthew, yeah, please. Of those links there. The first one has resources. So that has the tip sheet, the script, the video you saw today of the note taking app, and a copy of the slides. The second link is where you actually will take notes. You can train there and practice right now um, anytime you want to between now and the event. And that's also the same event you'll use, or all the same link you'll use on the day of the event. Okay, so so will you send us something where we can practice? Because um, at the moment, I'm just not seeing any it's of those the, it's things. In, it's in Zoom chat, and then we'll uh, it will be sent out after this as well. Yeah, okay. so it's um, it was at two twenty four that Matthew sent those two links uh, in the chat right now. Um, so he just resent them. Thank you, Matthew. Okay, good. Okay. Thank you. All right. Okay, so this now uh, concludes our uh, demonstration of what the um, it would look like um, to have it. Yep, the spiritual conversation. So I really appreciate uh, yeah. all of your help with this. And um, yeah, you won't. Uh, <laughs> in this conversation, we had fifty-one people that were listening in. But when you go to have your fishbowl conversation, it'll just be the group of five to seven people that you'll be with. So thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Anne Marie. Thank thank you all to all our participants as well. Uh, thank you for a beautiful conversation. Actually, uh, as you can see, these are really these are very real conversations, and we really get into the issues. Uh, quite immediately. You can also see through the conversation that we really, they really moved from I to we. They moved from their individual responses. And you notice at the end, they were really all working together to develop that report. Do we all agree? Did you agree with this? They're working as a group. Um, so that's the dynamic that you want to bring people to. Uh, we're uh, about close to our time. So we're, we won't have time for the small groups. But we do have time for two things. One is a, a poll, a survey that'll come up on your screen in a moment, right on top of my face. 
Um, and it's really asking you if you're able to facilitate either at either of the meetings uh, on April 23rd, either at 1 p.m. Rome time or 6 p.m. Rome time or both. We could use your help. Um, well, if you uh, answer that question, uh, even if you've answered before, just please let us know now and we can provide you with all the information. Uh, we will stay on for a little while for questions and answers. So if you have some uh, burning questions, uh, we have a little bit of time now. You can either type those into the chat uh, or if you wanna raise your hand, uh, we'll have uh, maybe five or 10 minutes for questions. Um, and if you have any more questions, you can certainly email me. I'll put my email into the chat as well. Um, and we're here to be of help and uh, to assist you all the way through. So if you need any help along the way, we're, we'll be here. Uh, so if you have any questions at this point, we're happy to entertain any questions you have. Um, yeah, Joan. Um, I, I don't see the chat and I didn't get any of those um, forms and notes that um, um, was said that you sent. Ah, okay. Uh, so if you go to the bottom of the, of the Zoom, of your Zoom, you'll see a little dialogue box. That's how you open the chat. It doesn't um, say chat though. Oh. I don't, I don't, I had one at one time. Oh, wait a second. Okay. Now, am I in? I we pressed on click chat, the more but, button. Um, oh, maybe there's a more button. I did press more and it says chat and I opened it. Are you Matthew? Oh, uh, no, Matthew's here. <laughs> Matthew's here though. Um, Cause it's coming up to Matthew. Yeah, I didn't that's, think. that's what I sent. Um, I sent you the links directly in the chat. I can go ahead and do that again. You might need to make your window larger. Uh, but if you want to stick around at the very end, I'll help you at the very end. We'll also send this out afterwards um, to make sure that you can see this. Okay. Thank you. Great. Thanks, John. Uh, Victoria? Victoria Parco? Uh, Victoria, you're muted. You'll have to unmute. Okay. There you go. It's about, it's about the the conversation itself, you know, uh, I, I find it, I'm, I, I'm also Jesuit trained, no? I, I come from a Jesuit university. I find that it's so scripted, okay? And uh, I'm wondering if, uh, how, of course, the Holy Spirit can enter any time he wants, no, but it, it's so scripted, I was wondering how, it can facilitate the experience of the spirit uh, who is like the wind who blows when he wants and cannot be uh, confined to uh, something scripted. I, I, please do not think I'm against this or what, but it's just, it strikes me as a bit scripted. Yes. I, I uh, yeah, let me address that, Victoria. It is true. Uh, we are using the script for a couple reasons. One is so that we have a, a everyone has the same experience, a similar experience. Um, and it is also, I think, one of the ways to learn uh, the pattern of the conversation for people that have never had a conversation like this before. Uh, so you could consider it almost like, um, like training wheels of a conversation in the spirit. It's sort of for people who are just getting used to it, uh, to, it helps them follow the pattern. It does feel a bit more scripted when we have a shortened conversation with only one minute. When we have longer, when people have a longer time to speak, um, what is dominant is the people speaking and the facilitator is just moving the conversation along. In the, in the demonstration, the script is a little heavy because that's what we're focusing on in the training. But when you get into the conversation, you should definitely not be speaking as much as the people in, in the room, first of all. The conversation okay. is really for them. The script is just enough to move it along. So I think it might be a little heavy in the training because we're really focusing on the script. Um, but I, 
I would, I would encourage you to try it out. I appreciate what you're saying that uh, you can allow the wind to blow. Um, and mm -hmm. I, hopefully it does. Uh, the script is important, especially for our training. Okay. Um, uh, what, what you're saying is that eventually, Spontaneity will develop. Yes. Uh, yeah. You have like you're better at you're being trying to follow the rules very well, yeah. and then when you are so used to doing the rules, spontaneity will come forth. Really yes, fast. I used. To, I had a, I had a poetry teacher who said you need to learn the rules of poetry first before you can break them. So we're yeah. learning. <laughs> I get you. <laughs> I get yeah, thank, thank you, you. Uh, Cheryl. Good evening. Yes. I'm sorry, I've got, I've got flu, but I just want to ask a few questions. Uh, the technical part for me is the notes taking uh, because I'm using my mobile phone. Uh, I've got a challenge with my computer and I wouldn't have a friend to, <laughs> to assist me when I do. I'm really interested in continuing with the training. I have registered for one session, the 18 hours. So that wouldn't be a problem because I, I, I think so, because you said you give 24 hours, but the question is that the participant, are they not going to see the report you are sending or how should you go about after the notes taking before you submit the report do you need to share with the participant will you be having their contacts that's my question uh yeah okay so you um if you're using your phone that's fine and you should take notes even on paper um if you don't want to use uh, the computer uh, and then type them in and send them to us after. Um, if uh, you will not have an opportunity to meet again with the participants though, uh, we may have a record, but you should really take the notes. And then if you have to read them back to the group and say, these are the notes I took, let me read the report, because this is important, we're submitting this in your name. So let me read what I wrote and then ask them, did I get that right? Um, is there anything you wanna change? Uh, and that should be sufficient uh, because you really uh, will only have about 10 minutes at the end for that time. So you want to uh, give them the entire report and then send it in. Uh, unfortunately, there's just not a way to get back to them very quickly uh, to check afterwards. And we only have 24 hours. I, I hope that helps. It does. Thank you. Okay, good. Thank you. Good luck. I hope you feel better. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Uh, let me see. Monica, did you have a question? Uh, uh, you're just muted. Then, okay. Yeah, Robert, I just wanted to ask you, how do people that want to, uh, if we are facilitating uh, in a one hour period and we have a doubt and we want to get, get in touch with you, what do we do? We just use the chat or is there a special way of uh, calling your attention? I don't just want to be people to be available to, to get in contact with any of you. Yes, I'll, I'll let Matthew answer that. Matthew, is there a way that they can contact me? Yeah, so um, there are two different kind of paths here. So the first one is uh, if you are having a like issue with a, another attendee, like as Bob was saying earlier, it's you know very rare, but it can happen. Um, then that would be the time that you ask for help. Like there's a button inside of Zoom, like that'll once you're inside of the breakout room, that literally says "Ask for help." And you can click on that, and that will notify us in the main room, and then we'll try to send someone into the room um, to help you handle the situation as soon as possible. Unfortunately, Zoom did not have a feature that allows you to chat from the breakout room to a different breakout room or back to the main room. I wish they would develop that. It would definitely make a guy like me uh, like me a job a lot easier. Um, so there is no way to direct a chat. So the second part though is for um, the Wufu team, um, we can uh, have a separate system that I can chat with you about after this event on how to uh, stay in touch. But for the average facilitator, you, you yeah. show up Matthew, early. Uh, 
uh, I was going to say the average facilitator here is going to just show up early. Um, we'll be able to pretty much solve anything that you need um, during the, the early time. Make sure you're all ready to go. And then once the breakout rooms, if you have a, a really tough issue, you can ask for help. We'll send someone into the room to help as soon as we are able to do so. So the, 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 the sound yes. wasn't very good. Can you? Repeat? Yeah, let me give you, let me give the short let me give the short answer, Monica. So the, the 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 short answer is there is a button in your room that says ask for help. It's like asking for an attendant on an airplane. You just press the ask for help, and then uh, a light will go off, and we will come to you as soon as possible. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Noanika. And just a quick one. Yes. Are we going to get a recording of this meeting, the meeting of today? Are we getting the recording? Yes, wonderful question. Thank you. Uh, yes, the recording is available. And if you look at the link that Matthew put in earlier, and maybe you can put it again, uh, it's in a folder with all of the material for today. The recording will be right there. Okay, in the chat. Okay, yeah, look okay. In the chat. thank you. Yep, thank you. Sister Consolata? Okay, thank you, Robert, and thank you, all the members. I'm Sister Consolata. I'm joining this call from Nairobi, Kenya, and uh, uh, I'm, I'm very excited about what uh, you have taken us through. Uh, my question is, maybe it escaped me, but I was wondering who are the participants and are they already aware and they have the questions? Because I went through the script earlier. Uh, I was just wondering if they are also prepared to have the questions so that when that time comes, then it is very familiar to them. But then who are they? Yes, a very important question. Thank you. Uh, yes, they are uh, Catholic women from around the world that are affiliated uh, with WUKWU in some way. So the, the group is, is Catholic women from around the world. And anyone who registers for the conversation um, will receive the questions ahead of time with prayers and scripture readings to help them think about it. So they receive all of that one week uh, ahead of time. So anyone who's registered, they've already uh, began, they've begun to receive it and they'll have one week and they'll also send it to them one day before and one hour before in case they missed it. Um, and then they'll also have the time in the meeting to look at the questions and they have the examine period about seven or eight minutes to also think about it. Uh, so they should come to the, the small group ready for a conversation. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Great question. Um, Pelagia? Yes, I, I, I'm Pelagia from Zimbabwe and very happy to be here. Enjoyed the session. My question is um, in connection with um, network connectivity, Wi Fi connectivity, we often get interruptions. You know, you're, you're just cut off suddenly, unexpectedly, where I am. When that happens, I'm, I'm kind of wondering how will I link with the, the host to say, look, I'm in trouble here. Please rescue me or take over. I, I'm not sure. How can that be managed? So you're saying if, you, if your internet connection goes down? Yes. Yes. So if that happens, that is a really important question. Um, we can see everyone in the room. Uh, we have sort of a, a master panel where we can look at all of the rooms. And if and we see the, the, the facilitator, if you drop out, we will see that. Um, and we will, we will have to come and, and bring uh, a reserve person. We'll have a few extra facilitators that can come in. So uh, we will in some way note that you're the facilitator in that room. And if you disappear, uh, we'll, we'll um, have to send someone else in. If you come back, uh, we'll put you back. But uh, we do oh. have a plan um, uh, to, to bring a new facilitator in. All right, thank you. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Sister Kristen?
Hi, I'm joining you from Zimbabwe, Gweru. Thanks so much for the, this nice and wonderful opportunity for us to be facilitators and to be trained to be facilitators. Unfortunately, I enjoyed the session, the bits when I joined, but a good chunk of time I was kicked out because of my network problem, just as Sister Palma has, has said on her side. Now, um, and then there's a question which popped up on my screen and I answered neither that I won't, I might not be able to facilitate on the 23rd because I missed out a lot and I wouldn't like to present half-baked information. Now, how can I go about it? And then you said that you click a link. I kindly request that you send us on email. You send a link on email so that okay. some of us who missed out can follow up whatever I was taught today. And then help me out. I would wish to facilitate but because of what I missed, I clicked on neither. Okay. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you. I'll make a note of that and we'll send it along. Okay. And what uh, about the issue of uh, I clicking neither? Can it be reworked on? Yes. Yeah. That's what I'm going to say. Are you, would you like to come to the first or the second? The first meeting or the second meeting? The uh, 1 p.m. or 6 p.m.? 6 p.m. Okay, very good, very good. Okay, we will put you in. And then we will send you- Okay, a, thank you, thank you. Receive an email about that. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Yeah, Nora? Yes, thank you. I just wanted to say that uh, a big thank you to all of us, but also indicate that I've been trying to go into the Google Drive. It's difficult to download the work from there. If it could be sent via email, that would help most of us. I am sure of that from my experience so far, trying to download it. And yeah, thank you. Yeah, we'll give you an email in a minute too. If you have any questions or need more information, write to us there, but we'll try to get it out. Just um, noting from a technical perspective, the email will just contain the same link. Uh, the drive hosts the files. That's where they're downloaded from. Um, so it will be the same uh, link. Um, just, just so you know. Okay. And we'll have these uh, two questions. And then if there's any other burning questions in the chat, and then we'll have a, our final prayer. Um, Christaria. Uh, you're on mute. Hi, I just have a really quick question. Um, as a facilitator, I won't be able to share my thoughts, right? So I'm wondering if I can sign up for the Spanish, for one of the Spanish rounds, and um, th then I'll be able to share my thought as a regular participant. Is that possible? Um, there, are, there are two things that you can do. One is um, be a facilitator in one of the meetings and then be a participant in the other meeting. And you mm. can use your language. There'll be all languages at all meetings. Um, so you can choose that. And then Monica, I don't know if you want to address this. There was some way for facilitators to also provide a response. Uh, you're muted, Monica. Okay. There you yeah, I was asking permission to unmute. Okay. So uh, what we're planning to do, I was going to tell you at the end, but what we're planning to do, we know the facilitators also want to participate with their opinions. We're very thankful to you because what you're helping us, your help is very, very important. But then after the 23rd, we're going to contact you with a special survey where we're going to make the same questions. And in a way, we will, we will find a way to let you participate also. And you, your opinion will also be considered in the resume we're going to make, and we're going to send to the sign, uh, the sign out of these jobs, and we're going to make it public. So your voice is also going to be heard. We want uh, the voices of the Catholic women okay. be heard. So you won't okay. be, uh, we, th we knew that was coming, so we're preparing something. But let's okay. finish the 23rd, and then the second you know afterwards. Yeah, you'll we'll you'll have your chance to, of course, I want also, I want to give my opinion, and everybody wants to give Thank it. You. Okay, we thanks, Monica. Okay, I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. okay. Uh, Nick and Sani? I'm sorry, I'm probably not saying that correct, but I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, thank you very much for for the opportunity. My, I have two. Well, I've just seen that they've sent the link. I had two questions. I wanted to check 
uh, whether you could send us um, that link where people could register to share with other people as well. But I see it has been sent already. So yes. thank you for that. But thank my you. other question was in the chat box. Um, I wanted to check. I noted that in the third round of the con during the third round of the conversation, the first response where the question was how to what is the spirit calling us? Yes. And um, I noted that there were responses given, but those were not minuted. It was only the convergences, the divergences, as well as recommendations that were that were noted is that how we should, uh, we allow them to share on what the spirit is um, calling them to whatever, but then bueno, en ask el... the direct question on convergences, divergences and recommendations. Yes, this is a very good point. Thank you. So yes, yeah, so the round three is a separate round, just asking where the spirit is calling us to, but you're correct in that often those responses are the same responses of the recommendations. We use the reporting, the convergences, divergences, and recommendations as they're, they're the areas that the Synod asks for. Um, but you make a good point. I would, if I were the facilitator, I'm going to keep note. I'm going to keep note myself on that round three, because round three is really the good stuff. There's a lot of fruit there. And you might, if someone says something in there, where's the spirit calling us to? And they say, oh, I think the spirit's calling us to a woman diaconate. But no one mentions that in the notes. You might say, oh, you know, you, you did mention the women's diaconate in round three. Do you want to bring that into the notes? You know, so you could bring, and they say, oh, no, 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 no. Or, oh yeah, we forgot that. So you can help bring some things forward, especially from the third round, just to ask them if they're stuck. Oh, we don't know what, what our convergences are. Well, you did mention this. And so you can help remind the group, uh, especially from that round three. Um, these are a little, this is a little more of the advanced training um, that we can give you in, in a second round, but that's a, a little tip. <laughs> but thank you for the question. Um, Bridget? Bridget, are you able to unmute? Okay. There you go. Hello. Good evening. Yeah, hello. My name is Bridget. I'm calling from Nigeria. I missed out in some of the uh, lectures, and um, the two issues I had had been raised about the recording of the, the, the session. Mm -hmm. and then the Google platform. Both issues have been raised and I'm wondering if I'm able to have the recording so I'll be able to cover up for the 23rd uh, program. Um, of course, yes. So if you go into that Google Drive on the link in the chat, you can get all of the documents and the recording, uh, which will be up as soon as we're finished. Um, and you will be able to download those. Um, and then we'll, we can also, in some cases, send out uh, emails to everyone uh, as well. So, but the best thing is to click on to that Google Drive. That's, uh, you'll find that in the chat. I'm just jumping in from technical reasons. The video file is too large to email. Um, it would get blocked, but most emails are not attached. That's why we have to send it through Google Drive because okay. it's an hour and a half long recording. So. Right. So yeah, please use the Google Drive then to get that recording. Thank you for that point. Thank you. Um, Margaret Mary, and then we will have to go to a final prayer. I want to, we're way past time. Margaret Mary, you're, uh, you're. Okay. I said I couldn't unmute myself. Somebody else had to do it. Oh, no, I have two questions. And one is one that was in the chat is, are women that are not affiliated with Wukwo allowed to participate in this because I got my invitation through the ladies of St. Peter Claver. And I know um, some other women that I know in ministry have not had the opportunity to be in any kind of group. Are they welcome to try to sign up or not? I think I know the answer, but, I, but I'll let Monica answer. <laughs> 
Okay, everybody is open to participate. This is for everybody, all Catholic women and men, even if they want to participate with us and work with us about women's position in the participation in the church. It is open to everyone. Ladies of St. Peter Claver are also members of WUCO, but you do not have to be a member of WUCO. I'm gonna ask you to even spread it out. We want to fill the 1,400 places we have. See, so if we have any, and if we can fill them, and if you attend as facilitators, that would be great. The more yeah. people love this and practices, the better. So go ahead. Do they sign up by way of just Googling WUKWO, or how do they do it? Uh, you can go to the webpage, and they will see the flyers in our webpage of WUKWO, www.wuko.org. And there will be the flyer, and if there's still room, you just uh, there's a link, and then we will take you to the link, and then you just connect and register, and you should receive the papers from the Ignatian and Country Ministry. Okay, but you have to be sure you receive uh, 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 the, the acceptance and the link to participate. Okay, then my second um, thing is an encouragement. I think that as women, sometimes we are very delicate about our opinions. But I think the Pope has offered us an opportunity to talk about clericalism, and I think we should name it, because all of us bring up that women have not been appreciated in the church. We have been marginalized. We are often not given recognition or encouragement or the positions that we're qualified for. And we're at the mercy of the parish priest or the priest. He can say yes, or he can say get out. So I think that we need to be very honest, because Pope Francis has uh, consistently talked about clericalism, clericalism, clericalism. So that's his way of inviting us to help him um, stop the church and to heal the church from the clericalism that's damaging us in all five or six or seven continents or regions. It's not a European problem. It's not a Latin American or American problem. It belongs to the whole church, and we are the church. Amen. Thank you, Margaret Mary. Um, so with that, I'm ready for a, to, for a closing prayer. Monica, do you have anything you want to? Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to say, well, we want to thank, uh, I want to thank Robert and, and, and Marie, Matthew, and all the team of the National Country Ministry. We did certainly learn a lot, and we are going to learn more and more every day. That's the importance of this. Thanks to our WOCO volunteers that participated in the fish wall to the WOCO team that has worked so hard in these seminars. And of course, thanks to all of you who came here. Please, uh, your, your presence and next Tuesday is gonna be very, very important. We need the facilitators or this will not work out. So please, we do need you uh, be here. You, you have to be here 30 minutes before don't forget that, and because we need a little bit of more training and whatever, and so make a, a very, very big effort. And as I told you, everybody, all the facilitators will be asked to afterwards to participate in a different way. So now let's finish as we started, giving thanks to our Lord, to the Holy Spirit for all we have learned today. So you are with us, Holy Spirit, as we gather together in your name, you can say it all. As you guide us, make yourself at home in our hearts. Teach us the way to go and how to follow your guidance. We are attentive and ready. Help us to promote hope and peace. Holy wisdom, lead us in a love that influences our actions. Let us find in you our, in you our unity as we journey together in light. All this we ask of you who are at work in every place and time. Glory to you, source of all being, eternal word and Holy Spirit. Amen. So thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you all. Uh, if you need anything else, please, um, you can feel free to email and I'll leave my email in the chat for you.